YouTube, man, what's going on, man? It's your boy Yero, and I'm back with another video. And today I'm going to be showing you how I made $50,000 in two weeks. This was March. It's April now. That was last month. I made $50,000 in two weeks with my Freedom Zip Ups, man. And it's so crazy because I documented this whole process through my YouTube channel all the way down to film me the photo shoots, to the marketing, to film me everything I did to set up for this drop. So if you want to, go back and look at those old videos, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. But today I'm gonna actually walk you through step by step on the thought process and what I did to actually get to the point to where I did $50,000 or actually $51.6 thousand dollars if I believe so. I'm gonna put it on the screen right there. Um, if that's right. In two weeks, man. So yeah, I'm gonna really break it down step by step. Um, before we get into this video, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on the road to 10K, man. I'm not stopping until I get to 10K. We're going to stay consistent and keep posting until we hit that 10K. So, without further ado, man, let's get into the video. Alright, so step number one, finding the right product. I always go through a phase of product research when I'm looking for a product. And with product research, you always have to look for the trends. So, I go on TikTok, you know what I'm saying? I was just looking to see what's trending at the time of me trying to find the product. And what I noticed was trending was a pleak embroidery. So, that's something I wrote down, put on my notepad as I was looking. Another thing that caught my eye that I said I definitely need to include was the different colorways. Um, me and my past experience, black always does the best, which it did this time as well. Um, and I wanted to add something that was like a little bit more spicy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's crazy. I got the zip up on right now. Ain't even peeped that. But these are the zip ups that did 50K, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I wanted to add something that was a little bit more bright, so I added a red. You can't really go wrong with the red. Also, I had never done a red hoodie before. Um, next, I wanted to add something that was more so, you feel me, earthy, tony color. So what I did was I did a two-tone brown. And I'm glad I did that. The two-tone brown was crazy. The two-tone brown, it was, at first, in the beginning, when I first dropped, it was doing better than all the other colors, and then eventually black caught up, um, like it always does. I don't know why, but black always performs the best within my brand. So, if you want to take my data and feel me, my experience, go ahead and write that down. My father had to close the door real quick. It was getting loud outside. But yeah, go ahead and write that down. Black always does the best. So yeah, after I got the, the trend and I knew what type of you feel me, zip up I wanted to make. I wanted to make it different, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I put the 3107 on the hood. 3107 upside down means love. That's a big, big part of my brand. Um, I had a double zipper, but which I changed because I just didn't like the way the double zipper was working. Um, and you feel me, I put the design on front and back. That's something I had never seen before. So it goes all the way around. And if you can't tell what this says, it says dead romance. So yeah, that's pretty much how I validated the product. I also noticed that a lot of distressing and acid wash was also trending. Acid wash was trending more so the end of last year. Um, but I noticed that people like distress things as well. So I added a lot of different distressing on it. Um, it's really at the bottom and like, let's see. You can see it right here. You can see it better on the other colors though. But distressing, and this is an acid wash black and the red and the brown are acid wash as well. So I just added those features to my hoodie just to, you feel me, make sure when it comes to me going over the checklist of things that validate my product, that I had as many things as, you feel me, I could really put on there and say, okay, I put my all into this product. So lastly, the last thing that I added was I added a crop fit. Now, it's not too, too crop, but you know what I'm saying, it's enough. It's cropped enough. And dang, I almost forgot. I got the DR embroidered logo. You always want to put your logo on whatever pieces you drop. That is how people identify you and your brand. So, yeah. Next up, after I personally validated my product and I said, okay, I think this is a great product, I asked my friends. That's step two of kind of like making sure your product, you're not just hyping yourself up. Ask people around you, ask your friends. And how I knew this product was a big, heavy hitter, banger, boom, knock it out the parker was that, you feel me, I had some of the bros come over here and they seen these zip ups in a bucket and it was just the samples that I already got them. And when they was looking at them, they're like, bro, you gotta drop these zip ups, these hard when these dropping, blah, 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 blah. So that kind of just put me, cause I have a lot of samples now, but like that just made me drop with some urgency. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, if somebody sees your product, how I know somebody actually likes my product is when I'm walking outside and I don't know the people and they say, hey, where'd you get that zip up or that jacket? That's hard. And it's crazy because it's my brand most of the times because I really only wear my brand. Um, but yeah, 
getting validation from other people is very important. Um, and yeah, I don't want to say it's the most important thing because you feel me, you're not really making clothes for everybody else, but you are at the same time because that's who's buying it. But yeah, I always say it depends on your brand's business model. So I'm trying to sell as many people as I can. The point of my business is to make money and express, you feel me, how I feel through clothes. So we got step number one done, which was finding a product and validating the product. Step number two. This is my, my favorite, favorite part. This is what I'm great at. This is what, feel me? This is what, this is the icing on the cake for everything. Marketing. Now, a lot of people don't like marketing because you gotta think outside the box and you actually gotta stand out. And I feel like a lot of people overthink marketing, but it doesn't have to be like that, bro. It really doesn't have to be like that. Hold on real quick, I do wanna say if you're a clothing brand owner watching this right now, and you wanna jump into the specifics of your clothing brand and how to scale it profitably online, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with me below right now. It is limited spots, so pick a time that works for you down below. Marketing is more so just you showing people or showing the world your product, and you have to do it in creative ways so they understand that you know your product is the one or the product that they need, whether it's whatever it is. It could be a zip-up, pants, hoodie, shirt, jacket, a beanie, whatever it may be. You just have to show them through a video form now because that's how we market now, or through a picture or however you want to do it. Um, that this is a product that they need in their closet. So yeah, that's my favorite thing to do. I love marketing because it really challenges me. I love challenges and yeah, it's like you gotta crack the code to, you feel me, get your product out there to the world. So, Euro, how can I market and get my product out there? Number one, I've been saying this the past few months, if you've been looking at my videos, Instagram Reels. Right now we're in a time where Instagram Reels is like TikTok when it first started. The algorithm is so green and so great. As Soon as you post a video, it's sending it out to thousands of people. And like I said before, algorithm works like this. It puts it out to a small amount of people, boom. More than a normal amount of people like that post, share that post, and it puts it out to more people, and the process keeps going. So all I had to do was create something that was different, that you know people would like, um, and want to share and show other people. So a lot of the times, if you have a really hard product, I will be honest. Like for instance, with these zip ups, I think it was just a really good product. Videos will go viral on their own, just showing the product. But the other side of going viral is being creative. So I feel like with that perfect combination, which I had. Um, I was able to go viral multiple times. So first thing I did was I created short form reels just showing off the product. It was really product based videos, which I'm gonna show right here. Yeah, it was just showing the product, the features on the product, and yeah, so on. I also made a video of me explaining different features on the product, the ones I just told you guys about, as in like the applique embroidery, the double zipper that I had, the embroidery on the hood, the distressing, the crop fit. I made a video showing the details and kind of flexing those, because that's all you're doing in marketing. You're flexing and you're putting it out there that, hey, these are all the details that I have in my hoodie. You need this hoodie. I'm saying all hoodies don't have this. So yeah, I made a video like that. Then I made a video with a model. Her name was Brittany, shout out Brittany. We went viral, we hit 1.3 million views as of today. But yeah, me and her, we met downtown and we just, I don't know, we said we wanted to create something different that really caught people's eyes. We didn't really want to take from too many people too much, so we just created something different and it was a POV, I have the perfect hood video. So basically what I did was I had the hoodie in my hand, and I'm just show the video right here, but basically I handed her the hoodie and it was her in the hoodies having different rotations through the different colors. And that worked out perfect, that went viral. Like I said, we hit 1.3 million views. I did a lot of different model content. I also had another model. Go look on my page, guys, it's one day at Romance. Just go look at all the reels that I did. The reels really did help my drop down with you know planning and just moving strategically and making smart decisions but the reels helped boost my drop and really get me to that 50K drop. It was another model, we did some work, we recreated the same video because if it's not broke, don't fix it. Always remember that if something worked one time, it can work again. You just gotta switch up, you feel me, sometimes the factors or whatever, just make it a tad bit different, but if it's worked before, it can work again. So yeah, once me and her did the video, I also did videos just of me and the bros kind of just showing off the hood. A lot of people wanna see what your product 
startup looks like on body. Do not sleep on that. Everybody wants to see like, okay, if I do order this hoodie and it comes, how will it look on body? So you want to make sure that you show different videos and pictures and all that of how the hoodie will look on body. And you're going to get a lot of comments, a lot of requests asking what size your models was wearing. And that just confirms that people are looking at, you know, how it looks on the actual model or the person that has the hoodie on. So I would say don't sleep on that. All right, next up, what I would like to add in there is I did a photo shoot. Now, photo shoots are very important because people, like I always say, can see how they look in the product. So photo shoots are very important. In the photo shoot, I had two female models and I had one male model, and I'll post some of the pictures right here and kind of like the content that we got from it. But yeah, within the photo shoot, um, I tried to get every angle. I tried to make sure everything matched up as far as colors, as far as you feel me, you wanna make sure your models have correlating, you feel me, fits. You wanna make sure everything adds up and it looks right. So yeah, you wanna make sure you do a photo shoot, especially if it's a big drop. I always try to do a photo shoot. Photo shoot is where it's at. You know they say a picture says a thousand words. Somebody seeing a hard hoodie like this one, they did 50K, you know what I'm saying? A hard model setting it, a pretty girl, um, and they got on a hard fit, bro. That might just be what pushes that customer to press that purchase button. You know what I'm saying? So always consider, you feel me, a photo shoot. You wanna do your best. Uh, find you a photographer to work with. Make sure it always matches your brand aesthetic and vibe because that is everything. I do have a vlog of the photo shoot if you like to look at that. We'll put the link in the bio as well. Next up, what I did was I had a trip to ATL and right after the drop, like that same day, and this marketing side of things, which is influencer marketing, uh, helped push the drop after the drop day. So I don't say, I wouldn't really say it contributed to like the 20K in one day because I started posting this afterwards, but it definitely did contribute to, you feel me, the 30K that I got after the drop day. Influencer marketing. I did a lot of influencer marketing. I took a trip to ATL. As you guys may know, I'm in Charlotte right now. Um, but I took a trip to ATL. I'm from ATL, but stay in Charlotte. But yeah, I took a trip to ATL. When I trip, took a trip to ATL, all of the influencers, all the connections that I had, I tapped in with them. Mind you guys, I only had one sample of each color. So everywhere I'm going, I'm bringing these three samples with me because I never know who I'm gonna see. I never know who's gonna pop out. I don't know who I can get content with. That's another thing that I also wanna tell you guys that always make sure you feel me. You don't have to have 100 million samples. You know what I'm saying? And the influencers understood that. I can't give you my only sample, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to blow this up right now. But I told them what I needed was, you feel me, either a picture or a video in the sample. Or what I did was with some people, like for instance, Raw. Uh, Island Boy Ra, as you guys may know, um, I did a video of him just rating my zip ups. Any type of content that you can get with the influencer space next to your jacket or whatever it may be, the product, and them rating it or them telling you how they feel about it. Because the point is, you want people to see a familiar face and see your product next to it and boom. So the familiar face is like the bait to get them to click on the video or watch the video, and then boom, they see a hard product. Oh, I actually need to get that hoodie. That hoodie's hard. Boom, let me order it. So I did um, the influencer marketing with Island Boy Raw, Baby Kia, Who's Casper, and I think that was it. I can't really think of any. Oh, The Life of Cash K. Hey, shout out Cash K, man. Cash K is real, bro. He was walking on the side of the road, like not no crazy, but like he was leaving one event, going to another. He's walking on the side of the road. Bro, he had the choice to walk. I'm not trying to make it seem like, that sounds like crazy, but like he was chilling, walking on the side of the road and I seen him and I was like, yo, bro, I had DM'd him, you feel me? I think a year or two ago when I first started my brand, we were supposed to get a collab in, but it just never happened. But I just told him about my brand a bit and I told him I would love for him to get a real quick on the side of the road right there. And bro, I pulled over right there on the side of the road. Shout out Cash K, bro. He knocked it out within like five to 10 minutes. He said he was trying to go to another shoot, but he really just knocked that out right there for me, bro, which really helped me and my brand and feel me push this zip up in this product out there. So shout out Cash K, man. I really want to appreciate you, bro, if you see this. And yeah, bro. The last thing I think that helped me a lot was it, it kind of involves the last two. It was skits and Instagram Reels. So I did a skit on Instagram Reels with Baby Kia. I think it hit about 500 to 600,000 views. 
um, skits are doing really good right now. So when you are marketing on Instagram Reels, make sure you try a skit out. And also I wanna say, I did two weeks of marketing before I actually dropped, and then I left my drop open for two weeks. So that's a little sauce as well. So I did, is in total, the drop was open for two weeks, but I did two weeks of marketing. For me, it just varies on the product and how you do certain things. I just chose that specific drop method for this specific drop. I have different, you feel me, methods that I use for each drop because every drop is different. Step three, this is the last step that I took to actually get a 20K day and to get a 50K drop in two weeks. So what I did was with all of that marketing, I made sure in each of the captions and I made sure on my password page that I had email and SMS set up. What I was doing was all the traffic and the views that I was getting from all these videos that I was doing and these different influencers that I'm working with and these reels that I'm posting, I made sure that they had somewhere they could go to get reminded about the drop. So setting up SMS is key. I personally use Klaviyo, I've used Postscript as well. Um, there's a lot of different options out there as far as what you use. So people will go to these videos, boom, when they go to the video, I would say sign up for, you feel me, a reminder, boom, link in bio. When you click the link in the bio, they type in their number, they get SMS, and boom, now they're getting reminded on drop day. So the $20,000 in sales I did, that drop day came from people that urgently, and you feel me, wanted the, they wanted the product, you feel me, as soon as they could get it. They've been waiting on this product, and you feel me, it just came from the marketing and just being consistent over the time period that I was posting these reels. So in the end, on drop day, I did a total of, once again, $20,000 on drop day, and then the following remainder of the two weeks, I did $50,000 total. Feel me? So that was great. This is not my first 50K drop. So, I mean, I was excited, you feel me? Cause I did it, but you feel me? I'm really, to be honest with y'all, I want to hit 100K every month. Until I'm hitting 100K every month, bro, I'm not selling. So 50K is cool and all, but I'm still working every day trying to, you feel me, reach my goal of 100K consistently. I've done 100K in one month. I want to do 100K consistently, you feel me? Three, four months in a row. That's where I feel like I'm hitting the next level as far as me and my brand. But like I said, that's basically how I did 50K in two weeks. If you have any questions, please make sure you drop them down in the comments. I reply to every comment. And if you haven't already, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Road to 10K, like I said. I'll go follow me on Instagram, tap in with me, you feel me? And yeah, man, I'm gonna keep dropping this sauce, give me all this game. And yeah, I'm gonna see y'all in the next video.